All right, so this is piranha spawning activity. And this bickering is bickering over nesting. So that's a big female and she's wagging and she's sizing up, there's a, a male. And there's another big monster female. So this is usually uh, a precursor to spawning and dropping the temperature down from 80, 81 down to about 75, 76 is one of the triggers. And we did a big, big water change. So now these animals are testing each other. You can see the telltale signs, the bite marks on the sides. And that's definitely all part of a precursor to spawning. And they generally spawn for me at night. So if I look around, you'll notice multiple, multiple ones with the head aiming down. The one in the back, dead center in the back. That guy is showing off. And we might see up, oh, we see it right here. So this is good, these guys are lining up. Sorry guys. And there we go. So this will definitely be uh, more spawning tonight. And this is all triggered by just having, you know, good water parameters, proper temperatures, obviously the condition, this one on the back is doing it too. Yeah, you can see wagging everywhere. And I think what actually happens is obviously the temperatures of the trigger and then they'll go and start releasing, you know, uh, their hormones as they get uh, excited for breeding. And that seems to cause a, uh, a cascading effect to other fish in the same tank. All right, breeding red belly piranhas. Number one thing I will note, when you do keep fish at 81, 82 degrees, remember the oxygen carrying capacity of the water is very, very low. So I'm moving a lot of water. I'm doing a lot of degassing, which means your turbulence. Turbulence will get rid of the CO2 and allow more oxygen to go in. So I have right here, I have, this is the giant overflow and all the water cascades down to there. Well, I have plants in this too, to also pull out some of the nitrates. But these are some of uh, the tools that I use to succeed breeding this. And you can see that these animals are not too freaked out by me looking at them. And that is excellent. So tonight if I come down here and I keep the lights pretty dim, you'll notice a lot of uh, head pointing down. And in this case, the, the males are generally smaller. So this that's a male right here. So he's, he's guarding that nest. Remember these guys, the big overgrown tetras. <laughs> There's a lot of, a lot of bickering. And uh, in the case of piranhas, showing weakness is not what you want to do. Because piranha are absolutely into picking up weakness of a tank mate or anything. And that weakness says that's an opportunity for the other ones to attack them. Otherwise, they actually uh, are fairly social. And as long as you know there's enough food being presented to them, they don't eat each other. I used to keep, these are uh, Sarasomus, uh, these are red bellies, but I used to keep uh, Pariah, uh, let's see. I used to keep, let's see, Notatus, and, oh my gosh, I forgot my other type of piranha I used to keep, and oh my God, these would attack each other terribly. I've never bred black piranhas. I just breed like, I've bred like a Notatus and Caribe. These are the two types, and I'm still blanking out in the other one, only because I'm standing here sounding like an idiot. I want to say pariah, but that's not it, no. All right, say goodbye. Darn it, I turned my back, and these guys just spawned like crazy. Uh, I wanted to catch some spawning, and here I was. 
just being too distracted. I might still catch some spawning. Sometimes they'll, they'll wait a while, but I shut the lights out. <laughs> and I get a little bit, and that's all it took. They really, really wanted to spawn. head down and start really shaking. Thinner he is. And look at the angle. Like, look, she's so fat. Look. More angles on that forehead. sometimes and there's also a lot of arthropods and so I really try to promote having uh, little bugs and whatnot and I think these bugs are, uh, are key for uh, the babies and you know, having I have like one wart and the 
babies will hide in there and there's a lot of uh, microbial life and lots of little water life and I think that's really helpful for the babies and then of course you know use uh, frozen rotifers uh, baby brine shrimp both frozen live I've done uh, vinegar eels microworms uh, and egg yolk but all these things collectively the, the the babies will readily eat it but it's just you know success with numbers just you really for what the amount of eggs that they produce or the amount of fry that we start out with it's pretty much it's fractional so I've had thousands and thousands of babies that did well for about 10 days and then I started experiencing uh, larger mortality and this was in a 400 gallon tank where I baby these guys so much and water changes and everything. It's something about a stress hormone. So I think that's really important to, uh, to note. All right, see if they're gonna breathe. See if I can catch them. I'll come back to this. It's quite likely there's some spawning going on in the background. Not this pair up front. These guys might be kind of done. But this male will take on another female, and we can double it up. But there's a ton of breeding activity going on right now with these guys. Uh, but, you know, it's the lighting is tough. Like I said, these are twilight spawners, so they don't like super bright lights like Frontosa or whatever if you're into Tanganyika cichlids. But that pair behind this existing nest that just happened, it's quite likely they might be uh, laying some eggs. So the female will lay a bunch of eggs and then the male will come down and fertilize those eggs. And they just kind of go around in circles. There's gonna be a lot of eggs tomorrow. It's because it's, it's uh, much of madness. Right so much going on, I don't even know where to look. Yeah, see, okay, there he goes. He's putting his head, there he goes. Okay, he's, that male that's angled his nose down, he just started doing a bunch of wiggling, and that is him fertilizing. Now I'm on the other side of the tank. Oh, there we go. Okay, the male just fertilized. The pair, once again, in the background. He circles around and he drags his vent right on the substrate. Yeah, they're, they're, they're spawning going on. They're just, they're doing a really good job hiding it. Just, okay, there you go, right there. Those two, right in the background. Right there. Not these two in the front. But since they're spawning right now, I have multiple pairs that are spawning and they're just kind of hiding it. I'm kind of waiting for this front pair to start spawning. And they can't seem to get it. But these guys in the background, oh, I don't want to get big fatty. It's funny, you have a pair spawning and then another female gets in there and she steals away the male's attention. 
filming this is just is tough. Come on, guys, up front. I know if I walk away, it's going to happen. something at least with content, you know, my belly front, this is, oh, there's headstands, that's really good, that's, that's the mail, okay, okay, there you go, come on, substrate and just kind of drag himself and she'll just dump a whole bunch of eggs. Yeah, yeah. There is a whole lot of madness going on. Kind of cute, aren't they? Like no one's going to interfere with my nest. This is just a long video of piranhas. Most, a lot of this is pre-spawning courtship right there. That might be egg laying when that female's dragging her vent. I'll just keep looking. This pair, because these guys are front and center under the light. One pair that isn't doing it. Look at that heavy, heavy female just loaded with eggs. Hmm. Okay, so remember this picture. Not for sale. We're gonna remember what that gravel looks like. And then we're gonna come back and see some eggs. Watch that male do the headstand. He's almost straight up and down. And he'll bite the gravel. That's up, up. Right. So she'll dip down and put her vent on the gravel. We're close. So she's totally, there we go. Just started to do it there. Just starting to put some eggs down. I keep bothering them. My phone, the infrared on the focus is pretty tough. So back to these guys, there's a lot of eggs here now. 
on this nest. Looks like a bunch of caviar. So about three, four, five days right in that area. Usually around three days they start hatching. And then within a day or two after that, so four or five days, all the eggs will vanish. And then the babies go down into the gravel and they'll stay there for like probably about five days before they start becoming free swimming. At that point they become free swimming and they are ready to eat. So baby brine shrimp, uh, frozen rotifers, uh, vinegar eels, uh, micro worms, uh, uh, grindle worms that are in this water column, all sorts of different arthropods that are here, and hard boiled egg yolk put into the water column. Most important thing with the babies, you gotta keep the particles up in the, in the water column and don't let it settle down. When it settles down, they don't recognize it as food. So I put them a lot of times in a shallow type tank with uh, air stones and that gets things moving. But you do not want to crowd them. And I don't care how many water changes you do and stuff like that. It's, a oh, there we go. All right, you guys are just a little bit of spawning. Activity right there. So a recap, breeding piranhas. I'll drop the temperature down to about 75 degrees after keeping at an ambient like 80, 81, and make sure 80, 81, you have lots and lots of circulation to get oxygen into the water because oxygen carrying capacity of 81 degrees is not that much. Then drop the temperature to 75 after, of course, they're conditioned and they're mature. And then one of the first things you start noticing, the males start uh, clearing out uh, gravel nesting locations, doing a lot of headstands biting at the gravel, and that's all the beginning uh, for breeding. And they generally breed when the lights are turned down, or at night even. But right now I'm trying to film this. So as always, I'd love to hear what you guys think. I'm gonna put some uh, video up of little babies too, after they become free swimming, probably about seven days from that video. Right. You keep, keep going. Okay. Um. Yeah, things are going well. All the ball pythons have been fed, so we can start throwing the males back in another day. Because uh, we wanted to pump those girls with food, so I wanted them to regurge, um, yeah. throw, throwing males around. Um, that's good. Um, we got a bunch of retics that are looking really good. Um, Look at these little germs. 